What's up y'all? Today I want to show you exactly how I went about producing guitars on my very first number one song. My name is Forrest Whitehead. I'm a songwriter producer here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I created this channel to help the songwriter at home produce pro quality records. And about five years ago, I had my first number one song with an artist named Kelsey Ballerini. The title of the track is Love Me Like You Mean It. Today, we're going to be jumping into just the guitar parts. I'm trying to avoid a copyright strike, so I probably won't play the whole track. I'm just going to go through these, these guitar parts and show you the tones and the way that I went about producing these guitars. Guitars are a huge part of country production. That's why I take a lot of time making sure I have the right tones that are blending. But instead of telling you about it, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. And as you can see, I have no plugins on these tracks. Every red track is a guitar and there's no plugins. And I just want to show you the raw sounds that I got. And I'm pretty sure I cut these with an amp simulator. So that means it wasn't a real amp. It was scuff -em amps uh, at the time I was using that. But this is what these guitars sound like. <laughs> So that's our lead lick. Let's go ahead and go to the chorus. I'll show you what's going on there. Sounds like we got acoustic layer here, wide panned. It's already printed down, but that's also working with these electrics. There's one on the right, the other on the left. Two separate parts going on there. And I have this filter guitar. This filter guitar, let me turn this up real quick. And this is actually happening too over the lick here. So this is what all these things blended up together sounds like. And one thing that I used to think about whenever I was a beginner producer is I always was too worried about layering too many guitars in a production because I'm thinking, well, there's not going to be five guitarists on stage. Why would I take five passes of guitars? Sometimes the layers and wide pans of all these different types of guitars using different pickups, uh, you know, different distortions, just anything that makes the guitar different. When you take that same pass and wide pan it, it just creates a, a bigger stereo image of that one guitar part. So the listener perceives it as one guitar, but really it's multiple guitars. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And so you notice that they're not the exact same part. In the left ear, I have more of like licks going on. So there's some feel licks and everything else happening. So listen just to this left guitar. So it has So that little walk up there as well. All these are different movements that's different than the guitar that's happening on the opposite ear. So this is both of them together. A little bit of a feel there and a bigger feel here. So the whole idea of this So what I'm doing here is I have two of the same parts, but on one of the guitars, I'm being more aggressive and having more of a feel happening in the in-betweens of these beats. It really comes alive when you add this acoustic stack in there as well because the higher pick sound of the acoustics really brings alive that chord progression. Check it out. Here's without the acoustics. So it's all right, but it's, it's missing that high end energy that I like. So whenever you add those acoustics in there, I've got two acoustics, two electrics, so that's a total of four guitars right here and it's about to go to like six guitars with this lick. And another thing to note, like in reality, if you were a live musician, you would be playing probably the chord progression in the front half 
and then going and playing the lick on the back half. But with production, you want to go ahead and leave those layers in. So even though, you know, there's six guitars playing here, it's not going to be perceived that way in a record. On this last chorus, we have this roto wah guitar happening. This is what it sounds like. And notice this is not a strum guitar, it's not playing the chord progression, it's playing like a lead lick which really complements all the other layers of guitars here. So if that's not cool enough, we went ahead and layered even more fill guitars here on this outro. So I've got a, a, on a Les Paul guitar, I went ahead and did a couple of lead licks on this last chorus, and this is what it sounds like. An important note here, all this little lick is doing is just reinforcing what that other guitar was doing in the chorus. But on this last chorus, I wanted to really poke out there. So instead of automating the volume of that specific guitar, I went ahead and just doubled that part. This is what that sounds like. So if you listen to this one lead guitar, there's the lick right there. And it would be fine if it was just on one speaker, but it's something about doubling it and having this double go right up the center that really brings that lick out. Check it out. Let me balance it out a little bit better. So little subtle things like this, you know, is really what makes your guitars really poke out of a mix, especially if you have a certain lick that you're trying to elevate out of the mix. I also want to show you this Les Paul guitar that we have that just doing like a fill part. And the tone of it, it, it completely is different than anything else that's in here. Hey, and if I'm being really honest, the tone of this Les Paul right here really doesn't sound like amazing, but it worked in context with the mix. Let me just solo it out and show you what this sounds like by itself. So it definitely needs some EQ. Again, this is not mixed or anything like that, but kind of has this low mid boxy thing happen. Needs to be cut somewhere in there. But with this lick, it blends so well with all these other layers of this Telecaster. And so I encourage you, if you have multiple guitars at your disposal, whenever you're doing a lead lick, either flip the pickup or try another guitar, and it, that's what really creates that contrast in your mix, because you're not playing all the same parts on the same guitar. So this is what they all sound like together. So that's basically it. All you have is just a couple of different guitars. I've got about six layers here, and that was all that I did with the production on this song. You can tell by looking at my session, a lot of times I'm splitting up different parts. If I hear a certain lick, then I'll put that on its own track. I may give it its own compression and reverb. When I first started producing, I would probably take two guitar tracks, and it would be the same tone, same pickup through the whole production. I realized to really create some contrast with your guitars, you have to use different guitars, you have to use different pickups. And you know, on certain licks, maybe you're just adding an overdub for that moment of the song. This is what really helped me take my guitar production to the next level. So I hope you learned something from the short tutorial and can apply this to your own productions. If you liked what you saw here, please give me a like and subscribe, maybe a comment below, and let me know what type of videos you want me to make next. We'll see you guys next time.